yes, 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 yo. That is Nadia bringing us to this link right here. And uh, we have something special for you. Shout out to Nadia for dropping that new song with Calligraph uh, Jones and Fena Gitu as well. It's trending on YouTube. Check it out. Uh, VDJ Khalifa has been serving you the music. It's not going to stop all the way till 10. Uh, my name is Bai Moses or It's Bai Mo on every social media platform. And we have something big this Sunday. And Y254 is not going to miss out. That's why we have the main man himself uh, using Mbugwa uh, in studio uh, just to share more of this with us. Karibu sana. Yes, All right. So, uh, concert Nyumbani is coming. Yes. Uh, this Sunday. This Sunday. Uh, 11 TV stations. 11 TV stations. And uh, all social media platforms. Yes. Streaming. Yes. All right. This is big right here, but introduce yourself uh, on a corner for the first time. Uh, you're a quite famous guy, uh, but Kuala on a corner for the first time, introduce yourself to the gang. Get to do it. I don't know if famous is the word. But my <laughs> name is Eugene Bugo. Uh -huh. um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a producer. I run a company called Documentary and Reality TV, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, which is a company producing this uh, concert in Bani in partnership with Kenya Film Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the CEO of Kenya Film Commission is supposed to be here with me right now, He's, which is why I'm wearing a blazer as well. Oh, you, know, you have okay, to dress okay. well for the boss. The part. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, he's, he's held up in a board meeting so you won't be joining us mm -hmm. yeah so uh, concert nyumbani mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's a it's an initiative by by my company i created mm -hmm. this tv show mm -hmm. and the thinking behind it was um as soon as covid happened mm -hmm. one of the first things to go away was musical entertainment because you couldn't do concerts you couldn't uh, djs couldn't perform in clubs you couldn't go to clubs at all mm -hmm. um and so to, to and you know the big part that music plays in uplifting us. I mean, look at the morning you guys are playing really uh, yes. uh, hype music. They actually love us for that. They do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. So uh, as soon as COVID happened, of course, one of the things that was that went away was musical performances, and uh, artists tried to cover it up or like to make up for it rather uh, with with uh, with the live streams. Mm -hmm. And you had, um, I think, a bunch of all the top artists have at this point gone live. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is the biggest one I think was uh, Nyashinsky, which was about eight thousand views. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is while it's very good it's very uplifting it has it's limited in its reach mm -hmm. uh live streams are expensive how many people have bundles to stream an hour long mm -hmm. uh, show not many mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and then of course even then uh, it's still limited to the urban areas mm -hmm. so a lot of people need this uplifting in uh, in the whole country aren't getting it mm -hmm. and so this was the thinking behind concert Mumbani. how do you then take the same music and blast it to millions of people where they can access it without without mm -hmm. much cost mm -hmm. to their pockets so tv is still playing a huge role in uh tv is still how the people you reach out the masses in kenya still mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean this is going to change as as, as it's going along but uh, as, as soon as still uh, because the the cost of data is still high, mm -hmm. uh, data reach itself is difficult. I mean, if mm -hmm. you're if you're in the farthest part of northeastern Kenya, you, you mm -hmm. could even have the money for the data, but mm -hmm. the connection is not very good. Mm -hmm. So this is the thinking behind it uh, musically. But then, how do you also take this music and 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 not be deaf, uh, tone deaf to what's happening around us? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we introduced the element of documentaries. So. For every music performance you see on Concert Mbani, it will be dedicated to either a frontline worker mm -hmm. or, a regular, or a regular Kenyan who's doing fantastic for his community in the way of helping. All right. Uh, so what time uh, should we uh, watch after this? So 2 p.m. Sunday. 2 p.m. Uh, on Sunday. 2 p.m. on Sunday. All right. Across uh, what, what, all the what, what went into picking this time and day? Um, so Sunday afternoon is family time. Uh -huh. Ideally, this is, well, before before COVID, just to be after uh -huh. church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and so the thinking is this when the whole family is gathered, the young the young and the old. It's a relaxed time. It's not, uh, it doesn't clash with uh, tough news. Because you see, uh, towards the evening, around 7, prime time, like, that's that's very serious uh, mm -hmm. timing. It's mm -hmm. when you see the news of who's died and who's alive. It's what you see. <laughs> <laughs> I see. The news of what's happening in politics. So uh -huh. you don't want to really clash with that. Uh -huh. Sunday afternoon is more chill, you know. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, that, that's what it's good for consuming music. All right, uh, how does KFC come in? And this is not Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is <laughs> Kenya Film Commission. How do they come in, and what is their role in this? So Kenya Film Commission um, has sponsored this whole uh, program. Mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've picked up the bill for everything. Uh -huh. um, we approached. Uh, we have a good working relationship with Kenya Film Commission. We've done a few projects here and there before, mm -hmm. and of course, the CEO Timothy Owase is very uh, forward-thinking. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, since he took the reins mm -hmm. uh, at the commission, you've seen a lot of changes. You've seen, like, just recently, they think they awarded about almost thirty million to different filmmakers to do different things. Mm -hmm. And so, when we approached Kenya Film Commission with this concept, we got a yes uh, with the same week. Mm -hmm. I mean, they discussed it internally, and we got a yes the same week. Mm -hmm. And very soon after, they were able to facilitate it for us, which is what allowed us to pay the filmmakers. Is there's over eighty filmmakers at this point now involved? this mm -hmm. from camera guys to mm -hmm. caterers to mm -hmm. lighting people to the mm -hmm. bands that played the back music for the for the musicians mm -hmm. 
Uh, so so it has provided employment as well. It has provided employment for over 80 people, mm -hmm. uh, this production alone. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, of course, there's the uplifting stories that you will see on this. Mm -hmm. And Kenya Film Commission is, uh, uh, has paid for, for all of this, of course, through the Ministry of uh, Information, ICT rather. Uh, all right, so shout out to the government, shout out to KFC <laughs> as well for that. As yet. Is a is an inter internet uh, sensation, yeah. and uh, you picked her as the host for this show. Yes. Uh, how did this come to? Be? So the the whole thinking behind the selection of the artists was driven by who, uh, at, at least from where I sat, who mm -hmm. are the artists that play have played an instrumental role during this period. Mm -hmm. If you remember, as I had became a sensation, like I think she was already slightly big on TikTok, but at least I for one had never heard of her uh -huh. until she did the Utawezana challenge. Uh, yes, and I think it was just week three or four into lockdown when uh -huh. initially everybody was still hiding at home. Yes, she gave us something to smile. Yeah, she did, uh -huh. and her uh -huh. smile uh, <laughs> went all around. I mean, all of us saw those dances on our phones. Yes, and she brought a lot of uh, happiness. To, to, to a lot of Kenyans during mm -hmm. this period. And so I thought this was very instrumental. Um, the th so the thinking have, I was having now, uh, as host of the show is a lot of the younger mm -hmm. population, the guys who watch your channel, mm -hmm don't really watch uh, the other channels much. Mm -hmm. So then how do you get them to come and be interested in something like this? Mm -hmm. uh, so you, 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 they have to have representation. And so uh -huh, Azai uh -huh. represents uh -huh, this. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, she's co-hosting with Monique Magaria. Mm -hmm. And Monique Magaria represents your parents. All right. <laughs> so that when on Sunday when you tune in, you will uh -huh. see your, your dad will watch this and not feel uh, aversion. Uh -huh. And neither will Azai Azajmit. So this was the thinking right. uh, behind the choosing of, of, the, of, of, of the host. But at the same time, mm -hmm. Even the, the, other, uh, the other people on, on the show, uh, from the poets Sitawa, Mombi, and, mm -hmm. and Jazia, they also make very uplifting art. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Sol is, is on this show as well. Mm -hmm. He makes mm -hmm. very, very good music, you mm -hmm. know, Neon Bear and, mm -hmm. and, and Trao Nana. These are very, very beautiful songs, very uplifting. Mm -hmm. And Al Shaddai as well mm -hmm. came out uh, by Hat the Band, came mm -hmm. out just right after COVID mm -hmm. happened. And for a lot of people, this has been the song for them. Um, I'm not religious much myself, but I can tell mm -hmm. you, I've listened to this song. Pfft, yes, maybe you, over these are times. some songs that you hear even without playing them yeah. yourself. And uh -huh. they've played a key role during this period. Mm -hmm. this, this is the art that has been uplifting people. And so we wanted Concert Nyumbani to, to be a representation of this as well. All right. So Kenyan artists are involved. Uh, heavily uh, mm -hmm. Kenyan filmmakers. I saw uh, Eno Solik is also involved in Eno Solik is directing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, you know, Eno Solik and I went to, to high school together. All right. We went to Upper Hill together and we, we, were, in, we were So Upper Hill is a school of stars, yeah? Saudi so went to this school. Eno yes. Salik went to this school. Yes. You went to this school. I don't know if I'm a star, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's, there's a lot of stars. There's Shout out on the top 40, <laughs> under 40, by the way. There are uh, a lot of stars. There's a lot of stars who went to, uh, to Upper Hill School. Uh -huh. So Eno Salik and I were in, drama, were in drama club together. Uh -huh. And we always used to play the girl roles, uh, uh -huh. surprisingly. We played one famous role uh, called the J. Eno is a cross-dresser. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's not a cross Shout out, <laughs> Shout out to Eno Salik. <laughs> I know. He can act as well. Yeah, well, he used to. All right. uh, and so, of course, we, we, did, we went to high school together. Then we, we parted ways. Mm -hmm. We met after high school. And uh, he was a teacher at, at a college here in town. And I was uh -huh. a teacher at McKinney School. Uh -huh. We were both, he was teaching music. I was teaching uh, a film. Uh -huh. And so we've, we've, and we've known each other. I've known him since high school. We've, we've kept in touch all uh -huh. through. But we've never worked together. Uh -huh. And you know, Enos is fantastic when it comes to music videos. Yes, and I've seen his work. Uh -huh. His work, pff, uh -huh. uh, I don't, he doesn't need much introduction. Export. Uh, <laughs> so when Enos came, uh -huh. so this is the first project we've done together. I approached Enos very early on when I came up with the concept. I was like, yeah, uh -huh. this is an easy thing to do. You know, because mm -hmm. Enos, if you know Enos, he's very nonchalant. Everything for him. Like, no, no, we'll do it. It's chill. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, I'm very happy that uh, Enos is, is co-directing this. But also, uh, on the documentaries, we have a mm -hmm. we have a fantastic director. Her name is Kate Kiyoko. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's directing the documentaries as well. He share, a company is called Kipens Films. They do this mm -hmm. very emotive, good quality videos. You can check them out on YouTube. All right, yeah. wonderful. So uh, the big question is: Is this a one-time thing, or you're looking forward to having more and more of this? So uh, this is. It's, it's a, it, we, we are hoping it will be episode one because mm -hmm. we're thinking it's a very expensive production if you look uh -huh, at the trailer uh -huh. because of all this building yes, of sets. Yes, we are sets. going to be something the trailer yeah, in a few. Uh -huh. Yeah, building of sets. Uh -huh. um, there's quite a bit of travel uh, required because uh -huh. of the, do the documentaries. So we are hoping that after this first airing, we'll get um, sponsors to come on board uh, and then make to, to allow us to make more episodes. Mm -hmm. All right, so what are some of the stories we should expect this in? So, as I mentioned, all this is mm -hmm. for the purposes of celebrating people who are doing great for their communities. Mm -hmm. So we have a uh, we have a Boda Boda writer from Naivasha who's mm -hmm. who's taken it upon himself to to ensure that kids don't play around and spread the virus. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Footworks, who's an artist in Kibera, who's mm -hmm. who's doing fantastic work. As you, I don't want to preempt too much into uh, the stories. Uh, 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 just uh, just a touch. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have some ladies in Tala who've been taking care of of the policemen who work there. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we have Dr. Jemima, who's, who's been on the news already mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. because she's so. been during this period, you know, especially when we had the lockdown and cessation of movement. Uh -huh. As you can imagine, for pregnant women, it's very difficult to access healthcare. Mm -hmm. And so, Dr. Jemima has been going out of her way and doing this. And so, you'll see a story of her and one of the beneficiaries. It's very heartwarming. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, stories like this. All right, wonderful. As a filmmaker who's uh, making moves right now, there's so many filmmakers uh, who are. Were stranded right now, for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things they can take advantage of right now during the COVID stage? Um, so, of course, there's a, there's a government uh, budget. There's, um, and above all, you can only take refuge in your art. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Think of Azayad or, or Flaco. Flaco has also come out really big right now. They're uh -huh. not really filmmakers, but they're, they're creators. Uh -huh. And all they did, all they did uh, during this period is they became proactive. They created uh -huh. more. There's a quote. It's a business quote. It says... Um, during a period of crisis, mm -hmm. be proactive. Hope is not a strategy. So you can't just sit at home and hope. You have to do your bit, man. Create <laughs> more. Right. Um, so this this will be my 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 word. Right yeah, be right, proactive. Hope is not a strategy. <laughs> look them straight into the eyes right there and tell them hope is not a strategy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You have to say straight to camera, or you're good. <laughs> you're good. Okay. You're good to go. All right. So um, another thing. Um, We'd like to get to know you now. Cause mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk uh, uh, about you. Oh, you you make this it too, yeah? <laughs> you, are, you made it to the top 40 under 40. And Forbes. Uh, you, uh, and you made it really early. I think they should have made it top 30 under 30. I've uh, been on the Forbes top 30 under 30. All right. Twice. All right. And uh, you've achieved so much, yet people consider you uh, a young person. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You are a young person. All right. Uh, maybe you can tell us... How, you went through a lot. You, uh, you told me about your story in high school, yeah. uh, the things that you went through. Uh, did you see yourself being this guy at 18? Uh, at 18? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I started working out pretty early. Uh -huh. Working rather, not working out. Um, uh -huh. But you work out as well. <laughs> I work out as well. Yes, every day. Uh, <laughs> of the week. Not weekdays, not, not on weekends. Uh -huh. Weekends I rest. So, but I, I finished high school uh, at, at the age of uh, 17 and then I turned uh, 18 about a month later mm -hmm. and immediately I moved out on my own and I started working. I'm not from a very privileged background, I don't want to get into that, but my, my childhood wasn't very uh, pleasant. Mm -hmm. So I knew that if, if anything was going to change, it was going to be up to me. Uh -huh. So immediately as soon as I turned 18, I started working immediately. Uh -huh. um, I, I was the next row in Inspector Mola. Uh -huh. uh, if you know the show, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to play a true and kid. I hope those videos never surface. Uh, I <laughs> we was are to YouTube. <laughs> the internet <laughs> never YouTube. forgets. They're not They're on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this was uh, before. This was before YouTube was huge. Uh, I have so my contacts at draw. <laughs> I'll talk to my contacts. Anyway, so you um, were an extra. Yeah, I was an extra. <laughs> on, I was an extra on, on Inspector Mwala. I, uh, I was a boom swing on Machachari. Uh -huh. I was an extra on Nocturnal Junction. I was hustling, man. I did. Uh -huh. I, I, I did odd jobs on almost all those film sets as uh -huh. I was trying to learn the trade. Uh -huh. um, and then my first company, I think, was in 2010 or 11. Uh -huh. How old were you back then? 20, I think, by then. Uh -huh. No, no, maybe 19. All right. So that must, that must you have been 2009. That must have been 2009, yeah. Uh -huh. I was 19. So my friend Dexter and I, we set up a TV company. So our, our thinking was, we've been on all these film sets. We've seen mm -hmm. the director say cut, so you know, and you say cut, it means stop. <laughs> uh -huh. You say actually means go. All right. You can probably teach this to high school kids, uh -huh. to primary school kids, rather. So what we did is we set up a company and uh, we went to uh, a bunch of schools, McKinney School, St. Austin's, uh -huh. and proposed to them, uh, you know how you have drama club and you uh -huh. have music club, how about we set up a film club, but they, we charge the kids. Uh -huh. And they accepted, so this was the first business I did, I saved up some money on that, I had one of those 50 bob movie shops uh -huh. outside of USIU, so I did, uh -huh. during this period I joined uni to start uh -huh. TV production. Were you paying for yourself? No, I had a guardian who paid right, for my, right, for right, my right. school fees, uh -huh. uh, but then upkeep and all this other stuff was, was, uh -huh. was, was, was on me. Um, so then I joined uni, but... Uh, I didn't stop working because I went. Uh, I, I joined evening classes between five and nine p.m. Uh -huh. uh, so then during the day I would work. Uh -huh. And I did all these jobs. So I had this video game shop where guys would come and play X Xbox, PlayStation. But uh -huh. at the same time, we used to sell these fifty bob movies. Uh -huh. uh, this one went on for a while. I was still, uh, you know, uh, doing jobs on different film sets and learning the trade. Uh -huh. Then eventually, I decided I don't want to climb up the ladder. I want to own the ladder. So I have set up my own TV production company. How did you come up with this? I don't come up with this. <laughs> these are in books. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> so. I set up my, my TV production company and uh, I came up with this concept called Young Rich back uh -huh. in the day in 2012. Mm -hmm. You might have seen this show. Yes, I, I'm uh, a big fan. Yeah, and I uh -huh. pitched it everywhere and then eventually K24 picked it up uh -huh. uh, in 2013. Uh -huh. And it made a lot of money at the very beginning. That was your breakthrough, right? That was my, yeah, that was my breakthrough. Uh -huh. Um, and that was the first TV show. And since then, I've been creating an average of 1.6 TV shows every year. So. One point? <laughs> if you do the math, like totally. Right. Vis -a -vis oh, the okay. years have been. So uh, since then, I have Get in the Kitchen, which uh -huh. I created that ran on K24. 
We have Story Yangu and Maisha Ma and Story Yangu and our perfect wedding on Maisha Magic. Our perfect wedding is a top TV show in the mm -hmm. region, mm -hmm. or a top top TV wedding TV show in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Foods of Kenya on KTN. We have mm -hmm. Bing Bahati. We have uh, Best of. There's a bunch of TV shows. I think now we are we are at almost at number eleven. And just announced uh -huh. this week, uh, we have a new reality show with Saudi Soul coming uh -huh. out. Wow. Exclusively, you had a first on Y254 on Y in the morning. A new reality show with Saudi Soul. Yeah, I think we just announced, we are probably announcing today. I, uh -huh. I hope I didn't leak this information. Uh, thank you very much for leaking that information <laughs> on Y254. This is going on Twitter right now after we finish. All right, so uh, what is this about? Sorry? What is this about with Saudi Soul? It's is about it their the life. Uh, it's about their life. It's about their music. It's about uh, the process that it, it takes mm -hmm. uh, to get to where they are. It's about mm -hmm. the relationships that they are because you know a lot of them are The personal out. lives are yes. involved as well. Yes, very right. heavily. It's a proper real show. Uh -huh. uh, but it's a, the format is a bit different than what you're used to. So we're uh -huh. calling the format... Uh, so my company used to be called Young Rich Television. Uh -huh. But we've since rebranded it to Documentary and Reality TV. Uh -huh. And we only focus on those two genres primarily. Mm -hmm. And 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 the the new show Soul Family is a combination of both. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of um, documentary and reality. So it's docu reality. So half the show uh, you'll see a lot of elements of documentary where we go back mm -hmm. into their past mm -hmm. and the, and 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 the, the, the events that made them who they are today. Mm -hmm. Because you know your accumulation of your accumulation of of your past uh, right. events. Uh -huh. uh, but at the same time, on the reality side, we also show you what they're doing now, like what their day to day life is like. Uh -huh. uh, how are they coping with COVID? Uh -huh. How are they? Because you know, the such solo are huge. They're just about to embark on a, on a world tour, Europe. Yes, States, I remember. Yeah, yeah, for their new album, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. And so this has been set back a bit. So what are they doing instead to cope? Mm -hmm. How are they? They have a all these things. Label. We are going to see them there. They have a record. You had it first on Y yeah. in the morning. <laughs> all right, you buy for Saudi Soul reality show coming to you soon. All right. So before we get back to what's happening on Sunday, yeah. uh, from your analysis, what is it about reality shows that gets people glued to the screen? Because I've never understood this i don't know if i if i can honestly answer for you that question because yes. the answer is not pretty the answer is not pretty no uh -huh. so these real shows are addictive for a reason uh you watch aspirational people because uh -huh. of envy all right that's why if you watch the conditions everybody hates on it but it's still every season it's bigger and bigger that's why the, uh, everybody hated on being bahati online but you're all watching, you're hitting on minute 24, it means you watch the full episode, man. <laughs> so that is the it's, emotion you have to tap into when you're going that, to... That's the tap into, it's envy. All right. And then, of course, it's... Um, the, this, in society, there's... I'm getting too technical now. Uh -huh. But in society, there's people who we consider arbiters like of taste. Uh -huh. I'm, a tech, I'm a very technical uh -huh. guy. You, uh -huh. you ask the We questions. love technical. Don't you love technical, <laughs> Khalifa? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, there's people in society who are arbitrators of taste. Like, uh -huh. these are the guys who carry who tell you how to dress and usually in most cases the celebrities mm -hmm. so you watch reality shows to keep up with them that's why it's uh -huh. called keeping up with the conditions for example uh, -huh. uh being bahati you watch it because he's a, he's a star and you want to see how he did it but then when you watch it you also think you're better than him so it's envy uh -huh. so it's, envy uh, is a primary emotion yeah. that drives us to watch reality shows i love this if you're planning to do a reality show in future remember to tap into that emotion right there let's get back to sunday and uh in a few words, just tell people what they should look out for and the reason they should be uh, glued okay. to their screens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Sunday, 2 p.m. on almost all major TV stations, including TV, including uh, Y254, mm -hmm. uh, Constant Numbani will come on your screens. Performing will be Ben Soul, Hat the Band, uh, Sitawa, uh, Mombi Masharia, Jazia. Mm -hmm. We have a fantastic lineup of poetry and music, and all of it is dedicated to uh, great Kenyans who are doing uh, a lot to help people in their communities. Thank you very much for that one. Thank you very much for coming through to White 54 And thank you very much for what uh, you are doing. We are looking forward to more uh, of this. We are ho hoping it's not going to stop here. We hope so as well. All right. VDJ Khalifa, it's about your time. But remember, we have a question on Facebook. Uh, who is a 10 superstar for you? Who is, who is the star that is a 10? Nim Sanim Gani, Nim Celebrity Mgani, Ambayo Nona Kamani 10. Kwako. Tell us on Facebook so we can share it with the rest of the world. This is Social Friday. My name is Bai Moses, or it's Bai Won, every social media platform. VDJ Khalifa, take it away.